Good morning. And my God, guys, this weather is beautiful this morning. Man, I know like a half of the country is getting pelted with like ice and snow. And down here in the old Myrtle Beach area, it's like 70 degrees out this morning. It's crazy. Uh, I'm loving it. But anyway, guys, we got a good show for you. No, no, honestly, we don't. You know, I try to be the kind of guy that uh, I have questions myself sometimes. And I try to give y'all technical advice when myself I had questions. And one of the questions I really have here recently is, you know, structural damage. Let me borrow his uh, AMM1. I've been having a blast playing with that thing. And uh, so far, I've broke like 17.2 out of uh, two of these DS-18 8K strapped. That is right. I said DS-18 because everybody shits on that brand and talks smack and, oh, it's garbage. And them uh, Hooligan KO amps, they are no joke. But then again, you know, DD is using that design. And I don't think DS-18 made that design. I mean, I think they just... It was something that was done for them through SNI. Because if DS-18 would have made it, then DD Audio wouldn't have been able to copy it. And there is another company that is using that same exact like amplifier with their logo on it. But everybody craps on DS-18. Which they, they do have a lot of the cheaper Chinese junk. But when you buy their high end, you pretty much get high end. But anyway, yeah, these amps are like phenomenal. But the problem is, I clamped over 15K out of a pair of them strapped at like 2.2 ohm. I clamped 17.2 at 2.1 ohm. And sometimes I'll just play music in here like uh, a song for a TikTok video. I'll go back there and look. And it will only have went to 6,000. And it'll be at like 2.2 ohm. And that's what confuses me, guys. It's like, my my ohm, you know, for the most part, my peak ohm, when I got it on peak hold, you know, it's weighing in right at that 2.2, 2.1. But the numbers are far different. It's like, hell, I only did 6K on that song, and this song here is 17, or this song's 15, or 13. I can't figure it out. Why am I getting different power at the same Home load. Now, keep in mind, guys, I have two more clicks on my head unit. Clean. Like, very, very clean. Now, when I get to that second click that I have left, of course, that is where I set my amplifiers right before the clip light. So, depending upon how my voltage looks, I may or may not get a flash of clip light. But, for the most part, I have two clicks left that is still set very clean. But... I'm afraid to go that high because these subs are rated at 1200 RMS. And, you know, when I did 17, uh, that's like 8,600-ish per sub that it was seeing uh, at a peak, you know. So it, it, the power would, like, hit that peak and then jump back down and then whatever. You, you know how it works because that is kind of how your impedance rise works as a whole. It's like up and down, up and down, but uh, I don't understand why. Like, why at 2.2 am I seeing anywhere from uh, like 4K to 17K out of these? Uh, I talked to somebody that's pretty technical with this stuff, and they're like, maybe the refresh rate on the AMM1 can't keep up with, you know, the, the meter in it that's reading real-time power. Because, you know, it does a lot of calculations for your uh, AC current, uh, the amperage, and, and all this, you know. And it does magic in there to get the number. But that's got me puzzled. So, I mean, if you have any ideas on this, why I'm getting all these different uh, power levels at the same ohm load, feel free to chime in because I'd love to learn some more today. But anyway, yeah, I am very, very impressed with these uh, subwoofers for taking that power. I mean, I've played some songs and had it on real time back there and just watched. And, you know, I'm staying at like 
like 8,500, 9,000 watts. Like the whole time it's just like the numbers staying up there. And that is per pair of them. You know, those numbers are per pair because the amps are strapped on two and then two on the other side. But uh, yeah, I'm very impressed. I'll come back up in here, roll the bass knob down and there's no smell at all. So that in itself is like really impressive. But, you know, everybody dogged the DS18 amps when I got them. And then they found out they're Korean made by S&I. And then, then they still, you know, tried to dog because they're like well you know even though you have shared photos of the dd board and the s and i board and everything looks exactly the same that damn dd amp is made with better parts because it just goes this korean you know made in korea ds18 had korea use chinese parts to make that i'm like yeah what the whatever guy because some people just they don't want to justify Paying like, you know, $14.95 for one of these amps when the DD is like over two grand. They they don't want to do it, you know. They would rather buy DD because it's got that DD logo. Man, if you're if you're like that with it, I mean cut the S18 off of that logo and print out a little sticker with another D on it and stick right beside it. You got the DD. But anyway, guys. That's kind of all I have today. And I've, I've had some weird questions. Uh, one guy, he wanted me to do a video on why. Well, he wanted me to do a video setting my gains with the speakers hooked up. Because he's like, I've seen you do videos of setting your gains with the speakers unhooked. Yes. And you know, when you're adjusting an amp, especially big amplifiers... Man, the gain knobs are so touchy. Uh, you know, I like to roll up to that clip light and then back it off a little bit. And I do it with a multimeter hooked up. I don't want to do it with a subwoofer. And the reason I do it with the speakers unhooked is I like having my multimeter probes in there because I want to see how many volts of AC current I'm getting out of the amp clean without a clip light that way i can go to every other amp and set to that same point now keep in mind one amp might be stronger than the other and trying to get to that magic number you got on this amp yes you can't get it because when you get right on it if you're lucky enough with that touchy ass gain knob you might get to that exact number and one of your four amps or one of your six amps might be a little weaker and it's like i can't do it captain you know, you got a clip light right there. So then you got to write down that number and go back and set all the other amps to whatever that one weaker amp will do clean. But yeah, there's no way I'm going to sit at my house 30 minutes with subwoofers hooked up, you know, clipping the shit out of them like boom, boom, boom to try to set gains. It, it ain't going to happen. It don't matter. It does not matter. You, you, you can set your amplifiers clean at that number without the speakers hooked up because the only difference it's going to play is when you do hook the speaker up. Say, yeah, you set them all clean and you got like Tar Amps MDAK number, 107 volt. They were all clean, 107 volt. That's with no ohm load on them. So you turn around and you wire it down to a half ohm. Is it going to clip? No, no, no. I mean, very, very small chance. But with your impedance rise, you know how I've said before, when you play music, it don't matter where you're wired at. You'd be wired at 0.125, which is like an eighth ohm. Your, your, when you play music, your subwoofer coil, even though you're putting AC voltage into it, when it moves on the magnetic pole and everything, you're creating AC current that's, trying to go back into the amplifier just that movement of the coil you know moving it, it's trying to push ac current back and that is really where your impedance rise comes from is your amplifier is trying to produce or your subwoofer itself is trying to produce current and feedback don't believe me google it and just that movement you're changing the ohm load of the coil on the the you know the pole piece it's creating different ohm loads of because creating current 
But at that point, even if you're wired at one, you set your amplifiers with no load and, you know, the ohm load they're seeing, you know, most of the time, you're never going to see one ohm. You're, you're not going to do it. That's why guys are sticking 12Ks on a 3-inch coil or in my case, 8K on a 3-inch coil because when you're playing music, you're never going to see a low ohm load. Uh, my amps are strapped at a half ohm per amplifier. They're strapped at one ohm. And my peak power, the peak power I'm getting is two, you know, around that two ohm mark. And at that point, my, uh, I guess if you break it down, you know, like 2.2, each amplifier would be C. And if you, I don't know if you like separate the ohm load per amp or not, that it's actually C. And I'd imagine you would. So I'm like a little bit over one ohm. Yeah. Uh, and I'm wired at a half. So each amp's no, getting nowhere near what they're seeing because of impedance rise. So I, I don't know what, the, you know, there's really, the whole point is, yeah, I'm never going to set my uh, gains with speakers hooked up. Never. Now, mid and high, I do sometimes, but no. In the olden days when we had like two tens, yeah, we did because we didn't have the tools to do it like we do now. And now, most of the time, you don't even need tools. Hell, my mids and highs amps, uh, all but one, have a clip light on them. So, you you know, really, a DD-1, great tool to have, man. Because even if you buy a cheap handheld, and I have one, the old uh, Lumio scope, them cheap handhelds, man, the refresh time on them is so low. Uh, you know, you're sitting there waiting three seconds for the damn screen to refresh after you make it an adjustment. And the the graphics on them are just so poor that you're like, is that a clip or is that smooth? Hell, I don't know, you know. So, do they work? Yes. Will they get you in the ballpark? Yes. Uh, but at the end of the day, the DD-1 just kills it in performance uh, because... You got a light that's pretty much instantaneous. It's like, beep it up too far, it comes on. Back it off, it goes off, you know. And they get you in the ballpark. But it's already been tested and proven that the clip light on an amplifier is just as effective and on the, the nose as a DD-1. So, yeah, there's no need for all that anymore. <clears throat> I mean, I have a DD-1, and my buddy Billy's had it. I I've only had it in my possession, like, I think a week out of the almost year that I've owned it, guys. It's been loaned to somebody else the whole time. But all my amps, for the most part, have a clip light on them. I mean, I'd kind of like to have it back to set my wife's amps in her edge. <gasps> the Audio Legions, because I, I don't know. They're not really, I don't know if they're clean or not. Uh, I didn't have either. Like my buddy Joe's got my Lumi, my buddy Billy's got my DD1, and I put them in and just kind of like did that old by ear to the subwoofer sound clean at all these different hertz and uh, gain matched them and let them eat. But I would, you know, that's the only time I've ever really adjusted the gain on an amplifier by ear with the speaker hooked up, and I don't recommend doing it just because you can get so much better and closer with a tool but anyway guys that's all i got today man uh i get so many questions that i, I need to write everything down because i forget a lot of them but i, I kind of wanted to touch on that because it went hand in hand with my question i had for you guys about the numbers i'm getting on the amm1 at that ohm load which is really weird uh and, and i i can't fathom it in my head but anyway, maybe one of you guys have a good answer because I have gotten from 4 to 17K at either 2.1 or 2.2. Anyway, guys, peace out. Thank you all for watching this crap. Man, if you like some of my content, you know, maybe subscribe to my channel. Hit that little bell. Even though I don't hit the bell on anybody, but I watch YouTube every day when I'm at work. So, And the people I subscribe to, I jump over to my subscribe list and like go down and see if they put new stuff out. You know, kind of like... Man, I wonder whatever happened to old Doug Bernard. Huh, I wonder what he's doing. Because I ain't seen crap from him except for a bunch of stupid iPad dashes. 
which man, I want to see the va the van. We want to see the van or Fido. We miss Fido and Rafa. Whatever happened to Rafa? <laughs> Peace out, guys. Base on.